Hey folks, Max here, and I love doing random deep dives of things I'm interested in. Albeit, this is a little more on brand than the train video. <laughs> Today we are going to be going over the abridged history of trans men and lever. No, not the train flag. Ah, there we go. Now this is a history I'm quite invested in. As you can see, I'm wearing a bunch of dead cow, but I also have the proprietary trans scars, which means I'm part of the community TM. But to understand why this history is very complicated, we have to know the history of the U.S. lever community as well as the history of medical transition for trans men. But before I tell you all about that, I would like to thank the Lever Archives of Chicago, where I did most of my research for this video. I'll put their links down in the description, so after you watch this video and subscribe here if you want, you can go over to them, subscribe, and consider leaving a donation. The lever community as a subculture was born out of the Second World War, quite like the biker culture that it sexualizes. Ooh, yes, he revs up my engine. God. Oh yeah, I'd ride him any day. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the line with, uh... No, I, I can't, oh. So, okay, so we're gonna have to put this auto in the, the edit. Okay. Cool. Some speculate that it was a callback to the camaraderie and roughhousing during the war. Others speculate that it was a facade or an armor to protect them against gay bashers who were expecting them to be weak. And lastly, it could just be a clever excuse to have a bunch of dudes in a bar at night when gay bars were illegal. Personally, what I could gather from my research and kind of what we see in the lever community today, I believe that all of these reasons have some truth to them. As for transition, trans people have existed for as long as humanity has existed. I should know, I was there. But synthetic testosterone was only invented in 1935, and then it was only approved for medical use in 1939. Enter Michael Dillon, the first documented trans man to medically transition and super hot sailor boy who around the same time went to his doctor to get this newfangled testosterone. And later he got phalloplasty, a type of surgery for trans men that was initially developed to reconstruct a otherwise detached penis. But since Michael, there's been tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of trans men transitioning however they want to. However, an important thing to note before we really dive into this is that for the vast majority of this history, the LGBT community was not the LGBT community. It was either the LGB community or the LG community. Hey, get out of here! It's July, you can't hurt us anymore! But bisexuals were just begrudgingly added by big gay TM in the late 80s to early 90s, and the T was really only added in the late 90s, despite, as we will find out, the LGB community was very aware of trans people's existence. They... just didn't like us. It should be no surprise that trans people have existed and been able to medically transition since way before lever culture was the next hot new subtype. But if you're thinking just because trans people were garnering some attention from the media at this time, that there will be a lot of trans men will be able to point out as certified lever men, you are mistaken. Many trans people at the time were what we call now stealth, or being a cis-passing trans person that is out to either very few people or no one at all. Like the gorgeous Michael Dillon from before, who sadly had to run all the way to India to be stealth. The climate in the 40s and 50s was worse for trans people than it is now, considering that even the gays disliked and excluded trans people. Okay, again, more than than now. But just because there weren't many visible trans men in the lever community doesn't mean there weren't any. Going in chronological order, born in 1951, we have famed AIDS activist, trans activist, and frequent lever bar cruiser, Lou Sullivan, who is often cited as the first gay trans man. Which, like, I don't know about all that because like I'm immortal and I was there since the beginning of humanity, so I should probably be like the first gay trans man, but like, it's whatever, like, he may have not been the first, but he definitely was not the last, but he did pave a way for many gay trans men to follow. Despite doctors still want to pretend we don't exist, hell, doctors wanted to pretend he didn't exist up until his death 
of where we get his famed quote, They said I couldn't live life as a gay man, but it looks like I'm going to die like one. As he was diagnosed with AIDS in 1986, and died about five years later. But just three years after Lou Sullivan was born, Patrick Califia, sex-positive activist, feminist, and erotica writer, was born. Which, at first, I legit couldn't believe that he was born in 1954, but then I remembered the trans man blessing and curse of the Fountain of Youth. He came out as a lesbian first and wrote a bunch of kinky lesbian erotica, and then later came out as a bisexual trans man and then wrote a lot of Leverman erotica, all of which are worth checking out. <laughs> Additionally, he wrote a sex column for Drummer, a gay Leverman magazine. These short blurbs can't do justice to the lives of these men, but they have done so much tremendous work both inside and outside of the Lever community. Well, Max, these are no doubt some awesome, amazing, inspiring activists, but what could the average trans man expect at the time? For some, it was the free and fantastical time that some cis gay men still reminisce about. And for others, much less so. It really depends on the group that you were with at the time, which is still the case today. But a detailed account from Billy Lane gives us some insight into the Seattle scene during the 90s. Billy Lane was the first out trans man with a lever title. After a conversation with Tony DeBlaze, who you might know as the creator of the lever flag, he was empowered to change the minds of cis gay men by competing in lever contests. Subsequently, he won the Seattle Mr. Lever contest in 1998, and then went on to be the first out trans man to compete in IML. Out is very important to note here, because for some contests, like Mr. Drummer or Drummer Boy, yes, of the magazine namesake from before, out trans men could not compete, and if a stealth trans man did win the competition, he would not be rewarded. Which, like, if he was stealth, how would they know? I, who knows? However, some contests banned, yes, past tense, trans men from entering entirely, like the International Sir and Boy family of contests. However, that was struck down in 2007 when Mark Fraser brought the brand. So now that leads us into the past 20 or so years. There have been significantly more title holders, including two IML wins, Tyler McCormick in 2010 and Jack Thompson in 2019, as well as numerous local title holders. Transphobic people are being ousted from the community, or at least in leadership positions, and transphobic events are feeling the squeeze from the community. But is all good in the kinky neighborhood? Not really. Well, it's a complicated question. Progress has been made for sure, but the cynic in me always wonders how much of this progress is just lip service. Because while I'm seen as a man by my friends, there's always some asshat out there trying to remind me that they don't like vagina, like I'd let them touch mine, commenting on my surgical scars, or saying that because I'm a woman, I can't be a bear or a lever man. Which, like... Honey, do you have eyes? <laughs> I feel like we're getting to a place of tolerance, but I don't need to be tolerated. I'm not when the waiter screws up your meal and you just sit there and eat it anyway. I'm a whole ass person. And after decades of existence in this community, I demand respect not only for myself, but for all trans men in this community. If you liked the video, like the video, comment about your lever history, and subscribe. As always, my links are down in the description. I hope you have a great rest of your day, or whenever you're watching this, okay, bye!